Hey everyone, I am Carissa Wright, a broker associate with Beach City Brokers here in Redondo Beach. And today I am so excited that we are chatting with not only my good friend, but amazing interior designer, Tasha Gates of Chateau 310. Um, Tasha is phenomenal and I'm really excited. We've been trying to do this for a few weeks now and due to like Christmas and COVID and God knows what else, we keep getting pushed back. Um, but Tasha, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, um, how you got into the design business, uh, maybe what areas you work in, and then like specialties just to get us started. Okay, great. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to do this with you. Me too. It'll be really fun. <laughs> so... I think your first question was how I got started in the business. Yes. So I think that really my design for uh, my passion for interior design began when I was a child. I remember remodeling my first Barbie townhouse when I was like <laughs> 10 years old. I'm like, wait, I don't like this floor plan. I remember just tearing it apart and putting it back together. That's so funny. <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> so I actually went to college um, I, with the intention of becoming a lawyer one day and that didn't quite happen. I took the LSAT and I was like, yeah, I don't think this is for me. And a few years later, I ended up working for a furniture manufacturer and basically we made private label upholstered furniture for lifestyle accounts like restoration hardware, pottery barn, crate and barrel, retailers like that. Got and it. I worked with them for about 15 years. I did design and sales with them. But while I was doing that, I was dabbling in interior design and doing projects on the side. And um, I decided to leave because I was really passionate about it and I just wanted to follow my dream. And now I've been doing it for about 10 years. Crazy. And I know it's so crazy. Time just flies and it really does. It's such a fun experience. So I have dabbled in a little commercial interior design, but mostly I do residential because okay. commercial is an entirely different beast. So my specialty really is um, residential interior design. Got it. Yeah. Residential is probably more like residential, more like life and like character compared to commercial where it's just like general, whatever. I don't know. Yeah. At and scale. You're right. And there's different regulations Got and it. so forth um, when you're doing commercial. So I, I just find that the residential projects are much more fun for me. Got it. Um, and then areas, obviously we live in the South Bay. So do you right. primarily work in the South Bay or do you do other areas in California? I do like to get outside of our uh, bubble. I just find it very refreshing mm -hmm. and inspiring as a designer. Um, obviously I hate to drive yeah. outside of the area, but um, it's really worthwhile to me. So I do take some projects like in LA, it really depends on the project and my interest in doing it because it is a lot more work when you're, you know, adding that commute into it. Uh, um, I've also, you know, done some projects where I haven't been on site. So I did a project in San Francisco and another project in New York. Very cool. That was really fun. I yeah. Yeah. Yeah, different vibes, different like styles and ideas, I guess. Oh, exactly. And different lifestyles. So my clients want different things than my clients do here. So yeah, really right. helps like expand me mm -hmm. and I grow a lot from doing those projects. Awesome. Um, specialty, do you have like a focus that you like to focus on like a certain like design aesthetic or anything it's funny that you say that um I don't I really love every single design style yeah be it you know traditional mid-century modern contemporary 
um, I really enjoy all different design styles. So if you look on my Instagram page, you will see that all my projects are completely different from each other. Uh -huh. I really like my clients' homes to reflect them and to reflect their family. Yeah. And um, it's just important for me that all my projects are different because all my clients are different. Yeah. And I think that I would just find it so boring to do the same thing over and over again. Yeah. No, I agree. And I actually find that really refreshing because it seems to me that it would be difficult maybe to hire a designer sometimes because maybe you don't know what your design style is or maybe you have a house and it's geared towards one style but you like something else or whatever so i think it's kind of nice to have a designer who can work with any type of like aesthetic and isn't just like modern or isn't just cape cod you know can do kind right. of a little bit of everything exactly no i find it really fun cool um, so let's go ahead and dive in. We now are in 2022, obviously, but um, last year, let's kind of recap. What were some of your favorite design trends that you saw happening in 2021? Obviously, there was a lot of things happening. Second year of COVID, right. um, still working from home. Um, so I'm wondering how that came into play with like the designs and trends you were seeing. It really did. I mean, I think the pandemic paid a huge role in interior design um, because people were spending so much time at home yeah they were even working from home schooling from home and so yeah. forth so um thinking back to all the trends I think that one of the biggest ones that emerged that I you know loved was minimalism yes and that had started before a little bit just because of the eco-conscious movement that was going on mm -hmm but it became even stronger with a um, pandemic because people you know were at home and they felt this need to um just organize and declutter yeah all the like marie kondo stuff that was happening yeah and the home edit girls yeah were super popular yeah. yeah um so i think that that was a huge trend that came from this last year um a lot of my clients were asking to repurpose rooms in their homes because they were working from um, home so or, or schooling from home for that matter so uh, people were looking to make rooms multifunctional mm -hmm. and I think that that's something that um, emerged from the pandemic as well totally agree right yeah and let's see Oh, I love the grand millennials um, trend that emerged. What's so that? it was just a resurgence of like classic designs and styles like um, twalls and fringe and florals, but paired with um, modern elements. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of like like your wallpaper, that'd be considered a, a twall, right? Twall. Right, right. So okay. from far away, it looks like a traditional French twall, but then you get up close and you're like, wait, that's not my grandmother's. Grandmother's, twall. yeah, totally. Yeah, and this is actually a twall of Los Angeles. So when you get up close, you're like, oh my gosh, all these amazing landmarks of LA are in this twall, which, you know, give this twall an update. That's awesome. I love that. I love that too, because I love having like in my house personally, like the vintage pieces, like, you know, like a vintage dresser, but paired with like other things that are super like clean and modern and simple and kind of mixing, matching it all. And that's something I think in this year we're seeing a lot, just okay. people pairing vintage items with new items, um, which is really exciting to me. Yeah. Because you know, for the past couple of years, it's just been like minimalism and all the homes have looked pretty much the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all white, all, all beige. Right, all gray, really. Yeah. And um, another trend that emerged this last year that I've loved is um, the resurgence of like warmer colors like beige and brown and even um, black for that matter. So because everything has just really been gray for quite yeah. a few years. Yeah, yeah, you're so right. Brown is black back and 
it's been fun this last year seeing it um, more and more. Now where, like, I can't imagine this, where, where do you use brown? Like, are you talking like paint or like furniture color or like cabinets? Yeah, cabinets, absolutely. Um, flooring. So for a long time, you know, especially in our area, people have just been asking for gray wash floors. Yes. Uh, right. Yes. And, yes. Like a rich, like wood, brown wood right. floor. Oh, I love it. And so yeah. forth. Love, um, it, love it. Love it. They're back. That's mm. awesome. Yeah. It's exciting. Um, with the tying onto the 2021, I mean, what do you anticipate design trends being like in 2022? Well, I think it's going to be really exciting. Um, and again, like the pandemic has like caused all this change Yeah, quicker than it normally would happen because people are spending so much time at home. And I think one of the most exciting trends, um, is, kind of an escape from minimalism to maximalism sure. and trust me like I'm all about um, decluttering not having more than you need um, it's more about like maximalism is more about um, an att attention to detail like mm -hmm. you know putting molding on walls or painting your ceiling um, not you know, forgetting about any space in your home, making even your laundry room or your mud room look special. Yeah. And like we said earlier too, um, just adding um, vintage elements with new elements. Mm -hmm. Before I felt like everything, everything kind of looked the same and nothing was special. And now homes are reflecting families and they're telling a story of that family and I love that yeah feel like going into a home and being like wow this really feels like Carissa's home yeah yeah especially in this area too because I felt like for so long um, like being in real estate going into houses I mean every single house was the same it was like white and gray and like that person had the exact same career marble and then that one had the exact same career marble. And like, not that I like, don't get me wrong. I love career marble, but it was just like, everything was exactly the same. The really gray floors, like it just looked really plain. And I thought that was really interesting that you just said that like um, molding something back. Like, do you mean like crown molding and like yeah. more like detailed like things? Right. Crown molding and even molding on walls. Um, and so it's like, it's, it's like all like, history is repeating itself in design, right? Like history always repeats itself in like fashion and design. And that's kind of what we're right. going through right now is like this phase of like all these old cool design trends coming back. Right. But then just adding a modern element to make it fresh and feel yeah. like up to date. Awesome. And I think, you know, you could take, like you said, like family heirlooms and antiques and mix them with, you know, more updated furniture and it could look so beautiful. That's awesome. Anything else for 2022 trends? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Well, oh, this is a really huge one. So it's been all about the open floor plan. And I'm finding more and more of my clients are requesting just the opposite. And I think, again, the pandemic, everyone's at home and people um, are asking for more privacy. Yeah. Um, Cause there's a problem. Like if you're working from home and you have an open floor plan, you have to take an important call or you have a zoom call and you know, and you have kids and everyone's in the same room. <laughs> or your significant others on their zoom call or yeah. So people are um, asking for um, more designated places in their homes so the kitchen's a kitchen family room's a family room the office is the office yeah so the rooms are more assigned as before it was like let's make this multifunctional this sure. should be my office but also a guest room and the kids playroom mm -hmm. well um that didn't quite work for people yep yeah and now they just want individual or designated spaces and I love this. I, I've been saying for a while, like I'm, I haven't been a fan of like open concept living for a while. And I've been 
like mm -hmm. dying for this to happen because when you live in a house that's like open concept and you have kids and animals and like it is so noisy in my opinion. I just, I haven't liked it for myself for a long time. And I love the idea of having like the separate rooms. And then especially from a design standpoint, like you can get really creative because you have these separate little rooms and you can make each room like different aesthetically versus like when you have a big open concept, everything's like white and gray again. Like we're back to like all being neutral colors. Right. And it all has to kind of flow on yeah. the floor. Um, whereas when you have like individual rooms you can do different things and i'm like you yep. said totally um all right um so i something i get asked a lot you know i get a lot of recommendations for people asking like for design recommendations i should say when they're like buying a house or selling a house or whatever and obviously i'm not the expert but um what are some questions you tend to see like if you have repetitive questions that you receive from clients like when they're either in the interview process or early in the design process um like what are some of the frequently asked questions i guess i should say that you receive let's see well of course how long will this project take yeah yeah <laughs> because and how much <laughs> yeah exactly that's the next question um how much will this cost yeah so i think people are People just want their contractors or their designers to be um, transparent and let them know like, okay, he, here's a range of what it can cost. So they're prepared. Sure. Um, especially for like a complete remodel or, a, you know, rebuild. Mm -hmm. um, it's nice to have a range because um, you don't want to finish the project and be like, oh my God. I thought this was going to cost $300,000 less. Yeah, no, it's not usually a good situation. <laughs> no, and it happens a lot. So I think that and they're, you know, they're afraid. Yeah. And so budget's a huge question that I get asked. Um, and maybe like some people know what their design style is, but sometimes I'll get asked like, hey, can, I have no idea what my design style is can you yeah help me, like determine that yeah that's that's actually like makes total sense because i know for me i don't have like i'm not like modern like i i like a bunch of different things so that's right. actually a really interesting point you bring up and most people do and again you know we talked about like just mixing different design styles and i love that like it it, it really um expresses your individuality mm -hmm. So how, when you're in that situation with a client, how can they help you to give you an idea of like what they like style-wise? Like, do you say like, go put like a Pinterest board together or go look at like a design magazine and clip out some pictures of things that you like so that you can try to get some inspiration for like the look you want to create? Well, I really get to know my clients and their families. That's yeah. where I start. So I ask them a bunch of questions. Okay. Um, one question that I ask is, what's your favorite hotel? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Why? I love that. Because obviously, that makes them feel yeah. good when they're there. Yeah. Um, ask them a lot about- Rosewood like, Miramar? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, or like, I'll ask them, um, you know, are there any colors that you absolutely love or absolutely hate? Uh, I try to find out a lot about like their lifestyle and what they do. Mm -hmm. um, I really, throughout the process, like become my client. They are my muses. I become them and I help them um, achieve their design style. And sometimes they know what that is and other times they don't. Awesome. Um, one of my most favorite projects I worked with, this couple came to me and said, our favorite hotel is the one hotel in Miami we're obsessed with it and we want our house to look exactly like that and that was like such a fun project to do because um i really had to take myself and put myself in that hotel and like really read like people's reviews about it because i hadn't been there before mm -hmm. and then of course um help like translate that into a residential home that well, that's, you know, that's fun home. It was really fun. And now, you know, they literally fell in love at that hotel. And um, now every time they walk into their home, it's like getting, you know, a flashback. Yeah. Of the, you know, I love that. 
I'm not <laughs> sappy. I'm not sappy at all. <laughs> um, that's really cool. Um, let me see what else. Oh, so we talked a little bit. We brought it up fees. Um, like when someone is interviewing a designer, how I mean, I don't I have no idea how this works. Like how I've heard different things. So how does it work with fees and what should someone be asking about that? Um, in terms of interior design fees, uh, designers work in different ways. So you could do one of several things. I charge by the hour. So basically, if I work on something for 10 minutes, I'm going to charge my clients for 10 minutes. Um, I'm very transparent. And it's yeah. almost getting a lawyer bill every month. I mean, I itemize yeah. every single thing that I did and the time I spent doing it. Uh -huh. um, other and it's a lot of work to do that, but I found that um, clients really like that. They like to know exactly like what they're paying for. Sure. Um, and it's great too because it forces people to make decisions. So if they're like, you know what, we spent way too much design time picking out this tile for this guest um, bathroom, mm -hmm. we need to make a decision asap. Yeah. Um, Another way to do it is to charge by square footage. So you take the square footage of a room, whether it's a bedroom or the entire house, and then you multiply it by what your fee is. Okay. Um, a lot of designers will also upcharge product mm -hmm. too, and you know, charge by the hour as well. I don't like doing that because. Yeah. It's, it's a very intimate relationship that you have with your interior designer. So if I'm, you know, really pushing you, Carissa, to like buy this $10,000 chandelier because I think it will look amazing in your house. Um, and then there's another one that's $5,000 that you're considering as well. You may think that I'm pushing you to do it because I'll make more money. on. You're getting paid more. That makes sense. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I think it's just more of a honest and like transparent. transparent. Yeah, totally. So that's, that's all really good information for someone who's trying to make a decision, like knowing those things so that before they get into this relationship, they're not like caught off guard because they are being pushed really heavily towards a $10,000 chandelier that maybe they don't really like. And they're like, well, what the heck do you have my best interests in mind or not? Right. And when I actually, um, started doing interior design I was blown away that designers were up charging for product as well only because you know we have the internet now we could google and see yeah how yeah cost. and to be quite honest with you I got a lot of my business initially because of that because um clients were getting frustrated paying mm -hmm. fee on a product and then they'd see it somewhere on sale for much less no way. Right. So it really um, frustrated them. And I, I understand that. Yep. Um, I get this one a lot with like someone maybe getting ready to sell their house. Well, I guess maybe these are like two separate questions. I guess what I want to know is if someone is on a budget, right. um, what's the best use of their money? And obviously this is kind of a broad question, but if someone comes to you and like their whole house needs to be remodeled and they're like, we only have X dollars to work with. Like, how do you usually approach that? Like, do you recommend doing like a little facelift everywhere or going room by room? Like, what are your thoughts? Well, it really depends on the home, obviously. And, um, you know, what needs updating the most I mean I might you know walk into a house and go hey just do your floors first or um paint the exterior yeah uh, um I think that generally I recommend I mean paint is very huge. inexpensive yeah. it can be such a huge difference yeah and um let's see new flooring if they're flooring is um like carpet or something maybe it's worth it to go hardwood that always makes a big impact in my opinion exactly exactly and if I had to remodel 
um, any room first, I probably would do like the kitchens, the kitchen or bathrooms. Okay. Um, because those are high traffic areas that yeah. you spend a, you know, a ton of time in. Yeah. And, um, I think you get a lot of bang for your buck. Yeah. Those. That's, that's usually what I say too. I always feel like the kitchen's a good place to start like when someone's like selling a house, like buyers are always drawn to the kitchen, especially, I don't want to sound like I'm gender profiling, but like women, like we love kitchens. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I think going kitchen first is always a really great idea. If there's only one room that you have time for money. Time yeah, for it needs it, obviously. Yeah. Um, I'm getting out of my email because I keep hearing ding, ding, ding. Oh. <laughs> uh, I think mine's been doing the same thing. <laughs> um, with that, my second part of the same question was about um, if someone's going to sell their house, I, I guess it kind of ties in. Is there anything that you recommend? I know I always have my recommendations, but things that you recommend that are like quick and easy can really increase the value qu quickly. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the things we talked about, okay. like, you know, paint. remodeling a kitchen, paint, okay. remodeling a bathroom, flooring, um, some easier things would be, um, maybe changing light fixtures. Oh, that's a huge one. That's a really good one, actually. Right. Or yeah. a lot of rooms don't, older homes, a lot of the rooms don't have can lighting. Okay. And just adding you know, can lighting, I think can make a huge difference. I agree. And now is that a pretty quick, I don't, I don't know how long it takes to do can lighting. Is that something that can be done pretty fast? Oh yeah, absolutely. And you can do the LEDs, which actually save on, you I know, know people love it when they're looking to buy a house. They love like the can lighting that's already there. It gives really great natural lighting. Oh, it's so quick. It's um, relatively inexpensive. It really is. It's oh, good to know. Okay. Much less expensive than even painting. Yeah. And it makes such a huge difference. Interesting. I actually did not know that. Mm -hmm. um, another thing I know I always recommend is like, and this might be, well, no, it doesn't still ties into you, but like, like the front yard, like curb appeal, like maybe oh, yeah. like sprucing up and like changing things around a little bit in the front or the back, like the exterior part. I agree wholeheartedly. And um, people in today's age are really into um, spending time outdoors in their homes and having like the indoor outdoor living. Yeah. And I think that um, it makes a huge difference when you do update the front and backyards and um, yeah. even updating like the garage door or the front door, just painting the front door can make oh, a huge difference. That act, That's a really good point as well. That makes like a huge difference. Another inexpensive thing to do is even change hardware. No. It's so inexpensive. And you're on fire right now. <laughs> yeah. And like some of these things I haven't even thought of, but they're like so small. <laughs> yeah. And it's so inexpensive. And, you know, you just find out like what the space is, your, the whole drill holes are, and you just yeah. buy more updated hardware that fits it, like fits. Feel like I should be like taking notes right now. You're gonna rewatch this Zoom. I know I'm gonna rewatch it later. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna send it to all my clients who are getting ready to stop. Uh -huh. Just watch from this minute to this minute. Tasha <laughs> tells you exactly what to do with your house. Um, um, other things that like clients are asking me all the time, and I know people have a lot of interest about, um, are like recommendations in terms of like appliances and finishes, blah, blah, blah. So I want to go through, I put a list together that I'm curious about. Okay. Um, the first is like, if you've noticed like a brand of appliances that you think is more like aesthetically pleasing or more reliable that your clients have been happy with year over year. Um, what are your thoughts on appliances, like kitchen appliances? Yeah. I mean, it's a tough one. I think that, um, you know, from a buyer's perspective, if they walk into a home and they have high-end appliances, I think that um, they're really drawn to that because immediately like they assume, oh, everything else in the house is made high-end. Sure. Um, yeah, some brands are better than others, but mm -hmm. no 
brand is like foolproof, you know? Okay. And, like nothing like stand out. They're all like pretty good. Well, I mean, some do stand out like um, Sub-Zero, okay. Viking, um, LG, sure. some do stand out and um, do perform um, longer gotcha. than others, generally speaking. Okay. Um, this one I'm super curious about because I always hear different things and, and see different things. Um, countertop material. So bathroom and kitchen, both countertop material. What are your thoughts and recommendations? I know that people always love marble, but I hear I've never had marble in my own homes, but I hear that marble has like a really difficult upkeep. Um, so curious about your recommendation for those. Right. I mean, of course, like, you know, I'm a snob when it comes to stone and I love natural stones. Of course. Uh, they're not practical though. Okay. Yeah. At all. I mean, they look so beautiful, but they're not practical. So I really get to like figure out like what my client's lifestyle is. So if they never cook or they never, and there are people that just don't cook or use their kitchen. Yeah, like Carrie Bradshaw. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, then marble would work. Okay. But there's so many beautiful man-made products out there today. I mean, we've really come a long way. There's a beautiful porcelain um, and quartz that really most people would think um, were natural stones like a totally. marble. Yeah. We've come a long way, especially in the last couple of years. It's really remarkable and so exciting and these materials um perform better you know you with some of them you can put hot objects on them most of them don't stain um a lot of them you can you know use sharp knives directly on them so we have a lot of options and um again like in terms of looks we've really come a long way i mean uh -huh. technology like especially this last year i was just been blown away with some of the new product that's out there so I leaned a lot towards porcelain and some that porcelain that's a type of slab right it's a whole slab oh okay and I mean they make them now where literally like the veining will go all the way through it like looks so the marble cool. does well exactly that's awesome yeah and it's really important too to have um, a very skilled fabricator that makes a huge difference okay. someone who takes the time to match like all the veining and so forth and that really helps um, a man-made material look more real mm -hmm. absolutely awesome and you can use that in both the bathroom and the kitchen i'm assuming yeah very cool um i already know what your answer to this is going to be uh, i know you but um what are your thoughts on flooring in a house like um hardwood tile carpet carpet oh my <laughs> god don't say that word. i knew you were going to do that um yeah i i'm not a huge fan of carpet because it's to me like i'm a little bit of a germaphobe and yeah. you never know if carpet's clean or not <laughs> right yeah you can't you can't see yeah like but with like, you know any um wood flooring or stone obviously it's like easier to um see dirt and grime and crumbs sure. and all that stuff yeah um so i'm not a huge fan of carpet yeah. but i do uh, yeah obviously for flooring i love um wood flooring yeah. um I actually really love um, stone flooring and even throughout a house and they do that in Europe. I mean, it's yeah. a common material that they use for flooring and it just looks so chic to me. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's, you know, really easy to clean and can last for years and years. Yeah. In terms of um, like wood flooring, do you usually recommend your clients go with a true hardwood or an engineered um, or a um, a laminate? A laminate, yeah. I, I, I'm not a fan of the laminate. Yeah. I mean, it depends on the project. If I were working on like an apartment complex or something, yes, sure. I would choose a laminate. Um, it, laminate to me just feels 
different. Yeah, I guess it would depend on like the budget of the project and the type of yeah. home, like you're saying, right. like an apartment complex where they're going to be maybe like right. rentals or something, then yeah, it could make sense. Exactly. So I, and again, when it comes to wood flooring, it depends on um, the budget because um, there's something so beautiful about like, you know, flooring that is actual wood planks, but yeah. it's so expensive as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's like triple the price of a re-engineered floor. Sure. That being said, most people cannot afford it. And um, my top choice would be re-engineered floors. They're um, yeah. cost effective. They look so beautiful. You can, now you can sand most of them up yeah. the floor. And most people like don't even do it once because it's not even necessary. Yep. They're yep. made yep. so well. That's, I, I mean, I see obviously all types of floors and houses, but I, the engineered, like sometimes it's so hard to tell because, you know, there is the real layer on top. Real, yeah. Yeah. And so it's, it's like called engineered, really. I know yeah, that top layer is real wood. Yeah. Um, furniture. I love this. This is kind of <laughs> a really question for, but I, I don't know, whatever, maybe people have it. <laughs> um, you know, like you go online and you're going to buy furniture for your house and it like sells it like in a full set. I'm always curious what like a designer's thoughts are on that. Like, do you recommend your clients if, if, if you can't afford a designer, like, and you're going to go online and buy your own furniture, like what are your recommendations? Do you go into West Elm and like buy the full five piece living room set? No, never. <laughs> okay. Never do that. <laughs> Ever. Yeah. Well, we were talking before about like your home really like reflecting you and having personality and um, mixing and matching um, products and bringing in some vintage things or family heirlooms. And when you know you buy the whole set, it really makes everything look so flat. Yeah, yeah. And it makes your home look like a hotel rather than a home. It's like character and like... <laughs> if people can't afford and a lot of people can't afford to hire a designer mm -hmm. you can go to West Elm and mix and match their pieces and still make it look beautiful oh, okay. uh, you can even like you know buy something at Costco and mix it with something that you bought at Restoration Hardware sure and make it all work yeah it just looks so sterile and flat when you're yeah. buying the entire set versus I, like buying a piece even if you even if you have like no design aesthetic like at all you can go into West Elm and like someone who works there they have like design people I'm assuming that kind of like right, help out. Yeah. And, and they're very like, helpful curate like a nice look with mixed pieces exactly exactly but you don't want your house to look like you know a West Elm catalog either yeah. it's good to like mix and match from I don't know those catalogs are getting pretty cool I know they are and CB2 actually is doing such an I amazing love CB2. Job. Yeah. But and they I do have really good prices. They do. And um, they're just on point with their design. I am yeah. blown away and like uh, just yeah. continue to be inspired with them. And they're like doing this whole brutalist thing that I'm obsessed with and great accessories. Yeah. I have no idea what you just said, by the way. They're on fire right now. <laughs> <laughs> brutal I was a brutalist it's a, it's, it's a design style it's oh okay a design style cool um paint color recommendations um like in rooms I know for a long time we were like what is it Swiss coffee Swiss coffee oh yeah 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 big and now like if I have a client who their walls are like Swiss is that what it's called Swiss coffee Swiss coffee yeah yeah I'm like no, we don't do Swiss coffee anymore. Like 2005 called and it wants its paint back. Yeah. Um, but what are like, do you have paint recommendations that you give to clients for like rooms or, you know, whatever? Yeah. <laughs> so, well, this is so funny. You're going to kill me for telling you this. I'm obsessed with Swiss coffee. I am obsessed, but I'm always like so embarrassed. To I think it's the perfect warm white for certain <gasps> homes. I'm like, 
What do you die? die? Because die. it's so oversaturated. So I have yeah, used it over and over again. And I tell my clients, don't tell, if anyone asks you what this paint color is, don't tell them it's Swiss coffee, promise. Because it has such a bad reputation. It's, it's it developed such a bad it's reputation. Such a, it's such a great warm white that I continue using it over and over again. I'm not kidding. I renamed it. I, I call it, so I'm like, we're going to call it Mykonos milk because I'm Greek. <laughs> it's not Swiss coffee anymore. It's Mykonos milk. <laughs> Anyone ask you, don't ever you know. You need your own paint line. You need your I know, own right? paint line. <laughs> I know. So I get like, yes, a hundred percent. It was like everywhere. Yeah. And people cringe when they hear that word or those words. They that do. Name. Yeah. Oh my but it is a really good white. It is. Okay. Well, I, other than Mykonos milk, what are some yeah. other colors you recommend? <laughs> okay. Well, when it comes to colors right now, I'm really just into painting walls, interior of the house Okay. White, because I feel like everything looks so much better. Yeah. Artwork looks so much better. Furniture looks so much better. So there's always going to be like one bell of the ball. So if you have like, you know, a, a blue room, that's the bell of the ball yeah. on the walls. Yeah. So, you know, I think that, you know, having like art that you've collected over the years, um, or a, a, anything on your wall. It, it just makes it pop. It makes it like the focus of the room instead of the, the paint. Yeah. So other than like doing um, wallpaper, obviously I, I have a, an endless love affair with wallpaper yeah. or I'm actually really into lacquered walls. So just doing like that shiny lacquered wall. Interesting. Um, I'll do color there. Okay. Or I'll do color in like I think it's appropriate like in a kid's room yeah. or you know maybe a laundry room but for like main living areas bedrooms and family rooms and so forth I um, prefer to just go white. white and other than Mykonos milk there's other you know whites that I like to use because it really depends on the home so you know, that was so my next question yeah. because I'm always telling ones paint it white paint it white before you sell it paint it white and then they're always like, well, what color white should we use? Oh, because everything looks so different and it really just- I mean, there's like 50 which, flipping shades of white and I'm like, I don't know. I know. And they all look, you know, completely different um, in different homes because it just yeah. depends like which way the house is facing and where the yes. sun is and, and so forth. So, you know, Mykonos milk may look different in my house than it does in your house. Yeah. So it's so important to find the shade that works for you and to really look at like undertones that like work well with your um, house. Sure. Um, and so, you know, there's like a lot of like Pharaoh and Ball has a great pure white and um, um, Benjamin Moore has some great whites that have, um, you know, some of them have gray undertones. There's like a simply white or something, yeah, right? Sim yeah. Simply white is um, mm -hmm. gray. That's I'm sure when Williams, I believe, or it could be Benjamin Moore. I think it's Benjamin Moore. Yeah. I think that's the one like I typically recommend. Well, Sherman Williams white, just white. Oh, okay, yeah. That one um is beautiful too, and it has like no undertones, um either. So it depends on the house, like. You know, I'd like a starker white for a more modern house and um, a um, softer white for a more contemporary house. Got it. And again, like, you know, it really depends on like, how much light the house gets and where the house is facing. Sure. Makes sense. Um, I think that is like actually all of my questions I have for you. I feel like it went really fast, but maybe we've been talking for a long time. <laughs> We probably have and we just love talking I know. we could just talk all day yeah, that's um, probably the case is there anything that you can think of that I didn't ask you like any advice recommendations anything no not really I mean I would just you know tell people like if they are if they want to remodel or redecorate their house and they just can't do it all at once 
just do bits and pieces of it, like sure. a project every year, because the more you put it off, the more time goes by and, you know, you to do, it just keeps repeating itself or, or you'll never do it. And yeah. because we're spending so much time at home, I, I think it's really important to um, work on our homes and make them like comfortable in a place that we love to be in. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I love that. Um, all right. Well, I think that about sums it up. And so Tasha, how can people find you? Well, let's see. Um, Instagram. Sorry. Yeah, Instagram. So it's Tasha Gates and my Instagram handle is Chateau310. Yep. And you have a website or email or anything or it's best to just go through Instagram. Tasha at Chateau310 is my um, email address. And my website is something I'm still working on. <laughs> oh, okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much. It has been so much fun. I and loved it. Yes, Thanks. thank you. And Thanks we'll talk soon. Okay, bye. Bye.